Hi, Jared. Station from Lodi gonna be on time? Huh? Ought to be in here any minute now. Good. You meeting that cousin of yours from up north? No, no, I'm happy to say dear Alma doesn't visit us till next month. I'm gonna meet Tom Lightfoot. Lightfoot? Uh-huh. It's an old Indian name. We used to have an old Modoc engine around town years ago, answered the name of Lightfoot. Yeah, that's right. Tom's his son. Oh. Well, I'd better get ready to fumigate that coach. And Modox is the filthiest. Well, maybe they don't bother you, but they bother me. I'll tell you what bothers me, Walter, the way you think. And only me. I like most people. But Modox is the filthiest. Welcome home, Tom. Ted, I'm glad to come back. How are you? I'm fine. Say, you. you're looking great. Thank you, so are you. Well, your mother. I bought him in Loda. I hope she still likes roses. You know she does. How is the family? Dying to see you. And Audra. I bet she's changed a lot in the last 10 years. Just a bit, and I don't think you'll be disappointed. Say, listen, what would you say to a drink while uh, Walter puts your things in the buggy? All right. Good. Come on, this way. Murphy, now they won. Okay. Okay. Jared, I haven't seen you in a goon's age. Where you been, out of town? Up in Sacramento. Murphy, you remember Tom Lightfoot. Tom Lightfoot? You mean that ragtag kid that used to scamper around with Nick and Audra? <laughs> One and the same. Well, I'll be. Where you been hiding, Tom? Well, back east, first prep school and then Harvard. Harvard? Murphy, you are gazing upon a newly graduated lawyer. You don't say. Well, that calls for one on the house. Murphy. Ah, keep your shirts on. Jared, how things in Sacramento? Oh, the same as usual. Legislature's slow getting down to business. About the Modoc reparations bill. Now, your last letter, you Not said... Not Tom? No business. We'll talk about that later. I want to hear all about you first. How was your trip? Long, and I'm glad to be back. Hello, boys. You don't remember us, do you? Uh, Tom, these are the Watson brothers. That's Clem and Ben. Yeah, you're, uh, your old man used to work for our pa once, remember? Slopping the hogs. He used to take his pay out in rot gut whiskey. Remember how he gets fallen down drunk and <laughs> sleep with the pigs and hogs? <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't hardly tell them apart. I think that'll be enough. Pick him up.
Very, very pretty. Hmm. Hmm. Well, now, all this for the prodigal son? Prodigal sons do not graduate from Harvard Law School. And stop rearranging my arrangements. <laughs> Mother, where can I find some wrapping paper? Oh, in the uh, top shelf in the linen room. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute. Hold on. What do we have here? What's a gift for Tom? Tom, Tom, who? Nick. <laughs> Looks like a scrapbook. You're being oh, nosy, you know. That, Tom. Well, now, no wonder you spent all that money subscribing to San Francisco newspapers. <laughs> that little laugh supposed to mean? Oh, nothing. It's just that I remember back when you used to carry his books to school. Only because I rode in the buggy and he always ran alongside. <laughs> well, now, this is very impressive. Indian wins 100-yard dash. Lightfoot wins broad jump. Indian wins decathlon for habit. Come on, Nick, <laughs> I have to get it wrapped. Oops. Whoa. Well, Tom. Oh, Tom. Oh. oh, it's so good to see you again. It's so good to be home. This is a little like bringing coals to Newcastle. Oh, they're beautiful. How very thoughtful of you. Tom, welcome home. How are you? <laughs> How are you, Nick? <laughs> Well, Audra. Hello, Tom. Hello, Audra. Jared was right. About what? About me not being disappointed in the changes. Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but uh, what about lunch? I'm starving. Well, it proves the theory that nothing ever changes. <laughs> Audra, would you show Tom to his room? Come on. Looks great, doesn't he? He sure does. What happened to you two? That stage was supposed to be an hours ago. Well, we ran into a little trouble in town, the Watson brothers. Oh, those two. Yeah, but well, Tom managed to take care of them all right. Good. Did you uh, tell Tom about the MODOC reparations bill? No. No time enough for news like that after lunch. Well, it's exactly the way I remembered it. It's been waiting for you. A homecoming present. I'm sorry I didn't get it wrapped. You saved all of these. Well, I didn't realize there were so many. And you know, I guess at the time, I just took enough satisfaction out of beating all those white boys. It was a joke or a drug. Thank you, Audra. I can't think of anything you could have done nicer for me. I'm glad you like it. So you're going to find uh, Stockton pretty dull after four years at Harvard. Oh, I don't think so. I'm sure you won't. After all, Stockton's grown a lot these past few years. Well, I'm not sure has. We have uh, four new saloons, two new livery stables. We're a regular boom town. Not to mention a new school, a new library, and hotel. And we're getting all the new plays and operas from San Francisco. You are planning on staying in Stockton, aren't you? Well, that depends. Depends on what? Well, Jared? What about the Modoc reparations bill? How's it coming? Well, what is it? Jared, I think this is as good a time as any to tell them, don't you? Tell me what? Tom, the Assembly Judiciary Committee voted not to send the Modoc bill to the floor. Jared, in your last letter, you In said... my last letter, I told you that if it got out of committee, both houses would pass it and the governor would sign it, but... Oh, yes, and but. They've always got to catch, haven't they? The vote was close, Tom, eight to five. All we have to do is swing two votes. We can do that. You can do it. How? Oh. We'll go to Sacramento. We'll buttonhole the committeemen that voted against it. Some of them are bound to be impressed with you. Impressed with me? Listen to me, Tom. You're a living example of what your people can do if they're given a chance. All you have to do is see these men, talk to them. You mean you want to take me to Sacramento and parade me around like I was one of Barclay's prize studs? <laughs> now, wait a minute, Tom. You wait a minute. I am not going to Sacramento and beg Indian-hating politicians for anything. I'm not asking you to do that. Well, that's what it amounts to. I spent the last 10 years of my life trying to prove to the white man what an Indian can do if he's given the chance. And 
I didn't convince anybody. Audra, have you read that scrapbook you gave me? Take a look at it. Indian wins track meet for Harvard. Indian graduates cum laude. Like I was some sort of a freak. What am I, a two-headed dog or a baboon? Well, I don't want any more of your chances. And neither do my people. All we want is the land that the white man stole from us. Tom, you can get it if... If what? Wait and be patient? Maybe we can go to the white man and say, pretty please. Work for the Modoc, Bill. It's the only way, Tom. The only way the Modoc is going to get what belongs to him is to take it the same way the white man took it from us. With a gun. <laughs> Your people don't want that. Well, have you talked to them? Yes. Well, now it's my turn. Tom, give the legislature a chance. It had its chance yesterday. Last week and last month. Tom, last... don't make us choose sides. You're white. You've already chosen. Gone. I'm going to drive Tom into town. Now, Audra. Jared, please don't argue with me. I think I know Tom better than any of you. I want a chance to talk to him. I have a feeling you're going to be wasting your time. It's my time. Audra's going to drive into town. Goodbye, Tom. Goodbye. <laughs> Remember? I haven't seen it in ages. an old shack some kids used to play in. No, you're wrong. It isn't just another old shack. Come on. The Indian war hoops. A cowboy going bang, bang, you're dead. You were always a cowboy. Was it? And later on, when we got older, we'd come here to talk. And tell each other our most special thoughts. Will you stop it, Audra? Stop what? Whatever it is you're trying to do. Tom, don't you remember how it was? When we grew up, it was... It was Tom and Nick and Audra. Just people, a happy family. I was never part of a family, Audra. It was a nice, cute little Indian boy the nice white folks felt sorry for and took in. After his mother died of smallpox and father killed himself with cheap, rot-gut white man's whiskey. Tom, what's happened to you? I've grown up. Are you going to take me into town or shall I walk the rest of the way? Walk? Why walk? Why don't you run? That's what you used to do everywhere you went. So why waste time walking when you're in such a hurry to start killing white men? Tom? Tom, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. Oh, you're so wrong. It's so easy. 
easy to kill, and you and your people have nothing to gain. Well, maybe not. But what do we got to lose? <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, that jaw still hurting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, he must have hit you with a spittoon. Oh, just never mind that. Get me some more whiskey. Come oh, on, come on. Hurry up. Oh, sure, honey. I didn't mean nothing. Ben? Yeah. The Modoc. Just saw him walking down Brazos Street. Well, well, well. The Cal and Benton are in the back room. Go get him. I didn't expect him back so soon. You fix him good. I'll tell you what. I want you to come along with us. <laughs> Be <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs> with me. Well, you know you, uh, you shouldn't have done that, Lightfoot. So you brought enough help. place. He's trying to get fresh with Lil. Yeah, I was going by and minding my own business. I, I happened to drop my purse, and when I stooped down to pick it up, that stinking Indian... Well, I'm too much of a lady to tell you what he done. Yeah, sure. All right, I'll get your story after Doc Marar gets a look at you. <laughs> I'm going to kill you for this.
All right, move up. Move out. You can't accomplish anything hanging around here. Now, come on. Go on home. Go on now, boys. Come on. This isn't going to do you a bit of good. What's the trouble, Fred? Just coming over to see you, Jared. Trouble's Tom Lightfoot. Nick told me you had a little run-in with the Watsons again last night. Well, it didn't end there. I'm holding Tom for murder. For murder? Yeah. What happened? Well, he got beat up pretty bad in that fight. He threatened to kill the Watsons. Looks like he made good on Clem. Any witnesses? Yeah, Ben Watson, Lil Bailey, she works down at Murphy's. There's two of the most reliable people in town. What'd they say happened? All right, you tell me how to dispute their story. They claim they all rode out to the Watson place together. Clem drove the rig into the barn. Ben and Lil heard a yell. They ran into the barn and saw Tom standing over Clem, stabbing him with a pitchfork. Fred, I'd like to hear his side of the story. Sure. through. I was wondering when you'd come. I just heard about it. Uh, and you jumped right over here as soon as you heard. You getting religion? No, I didn't ask for it, if that's what you're thinking. It was already here. I'm reading Exodus. And Moses is quite a man. And your interest is purely historical. That's right. What made you so sure I'd come? Because I'm Exhibit A. Proving the generosity of the white man and helping the poor Indian. You can't let them hang me. I wouldn't be too sure of that. <laughs> Did you kill Clem Watson? No. You threatened to. That's right, and I would have killed him, but somebody beat me to him. Maybe I'll have more luck with his brother when I get out of here. Do you mean that, Tom? Yes. Then you better get yourself another lawyer. Name one. You can't. I know you, Jared. Your conscience won't let you deny me my constitutional guarantee of right to counsel. Don't push me too hard, Tom. I'm just being honest with you. Isn't that what you want a client to be? So let's get it all straight. For 10 years, nothing has changed. My people are still drowning in a cesspool of filth and hunger and disease. And don't tell me about your people. I know what they're suffering. And I didn't come here to listen to you make a speech about it. You'd better listen. Because when I get out of here, Jared, I'm going to do everything I can. Does everything include working for the Modoc reparations bill? Oh, it's too late for that. You want it all right now, don't you, Tom? Well, it doesn't work that way. And my people are going to take an awful lot of you people down with them when they go. I know what you want. You want me to walk out of here, don't you? So you can say, there, there's a white man for you. Well, if that's what you're after, you're wasting your time. If I do walk out of here, it won't be because of all the white people you say you're going to kill. And if I stay, it'll be because you haven't killed anybody yet. Now, why don't you just tell me what happened last night? All right. Have you really given this thing any thought? Do you realize what happens if you get him off? What happens if I don't? If that man goes free, he's going to hang sooner or later anyway, feeling the way he does. Probably. No, probably about it, Jerry. Still, Nick, the law takes a rather dim view of hanging a man for what he says he's going to do. Really made up your mind, haven't you? You're gonna go ahead and defend him. Knowing full well that that man gets loose, he's gonna do everything he can to turn every Modoc on the warpath. Also knowing full well that he would like nothing better than burning the whole town of Stockton right to the ground. Yes, Nick, even knowing that.
Nick. I haven't got any choice. Can't you understand that? No, not this time. that you, your brother, and Miss Bailey arrived at the ranch about midnight. Is that right? That's right. Then, uh, Clem dropped you and Miss Bailey off at the house and drove on to the barn. He drove right inside. Did you see him do that? Yeah. Could you see him after he went into the barn? Well, no, but Lil and I heard him yell out when the Modoc jumped him. From the hayloft? Yeah. Mr. Watson, if you couldn't see him after he drove into the barn, how do you know he was jumped from the hayloft or any other place? Uh, well, uh, uh, Clem told me. Clem told you? Yes. When did he do that? Well, when I ran inside to help him. And what was the defendant doing while you got this information? Just standing there patiently while you two had a little talk? Well? No, Clem yelled at me while we were fighting the engine. Wasn't that far-sighted of him? Almost as if he knew he was going to be killed by the defendant and you'd be here testifying against him. Now, Mr. Watson. You further stated that you tried to come to your brother's assistance by drawing your gun, but the defendant knocked it out of your hand. Yes. And you couldn't get it back. Yes. Then you ran out of the barn. I told you I had to go in the house to get a rifle. Leaving your brother alone with a man who'd sworn to kill you both not four hours earlier? I had to do something. You could have stayed there and fought. Well, I... I didn't think. You didn't think. Well, may I suggest that you think now, Ben? Think about telling the truth? Objection. Sustained. I'm through with him, Your Honor. That's it. That's all of it. It happened just that way. Can I go now? I thank you, Miss Bailey. Unless Mr. Barkley has some questions. A few. Now, Miss Bailey, where did you and the Watson brothers go following the altercation in the street? To Murphy's Saloon for a drink. A drink. Isn't it a fact that the three of you sat there for several hours drinking heavily? No. And that when you arrived at the Watson Ranch, you were completely intoxicated? That ain't true! Your Honor, I'm prepared to introduce at least a dozen witnesses who will testify that Miss Bailey and the Watson brothers were drunk to the point of staggering when they left Charlie's saloon, not a half hour before the victim was killed. And I'm one of them. Mr. Barkley, unless you can restrain yourself, I shall have to ask you to leave this courtroom. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I said I'm sorry. As I was saying, Your Honor, I'm prepared to produce these witnesses, but I was hoping to spare the court such a tedious parade. What is the relevancy of your line of questioning, Mr. Barkley? Just this, Your Honor. We've heard Miss Bailey testify that the moment they heard Clem Watson yell out, they ran into the barn. Well? And she further testified that when they arrived, she saw the victim lying on the floor with blood on his shirt and the defendant standing over him with a pitchfork in his hands. But not a moment ago, we heard Ben Watson testify that when they got to the barn, the defendant was still on his feet fighting with the victim. Now, I suggest that either one of these witnesses or both are lying. I object. Or that they were so drunk they have no idea of what happened in that barn. Therefore, their testimony is incompetent in this court. Oh, Your Honor, I object. Sustained. Your Honor, I have no further questions of this witness. Mr. McCann. State rests. Is the defense ready to proceed immediately? I am, Your Honor. I have only one witness to call. Mr. Tom Lightfoot. I have one final question, Mr. Lightfoot. Where were you about midnight on the night Clem Watson was killed? I was at the old Indian cemetery just south of town. I'd walked out there to visit my father. And at no time were you anywhere near the Watson Ranch? No. Your witness, Mr. McCann. Thank you. Well, Tom, you deny the murder of Clem Watson? Yes. Well, you don't deny that you threatened to kill no. him. And Ben Watson, too. Yes. Well, 
A lot of men make threats they don't really mean. But what about you, Tom? Did you mean it when you told Clem and Ben Watson you were going to kill them? Objection. Overruled. Answer the question. I... Yes? Well, did you mean it? Answer yes or no. Object. Sustained. You may answer in your own way. Yes. Yes, I meant it when I said I'd kill them. And the only reason I didn't is because I didn't have the chance. I see. Would it be fair then to assume that if the jury frees you, you would immediately carry out your threat against Ben Watson? Objection. The witness has already admitted he would have killed Clem Watson if he'd had the opportunity. Before they bring in a verdict, I think this jury has a right to know what Tom Lightfoot intends to do if he's acquitted. Your Honor, this court is concerned with facts, not intentions. Does he intend to murder Ben Watson? Your Honor. Mr. McCann. And will it stop there? Or does he intend to go on murdering white men? Yes. If I ever get the chance, I will kill him. Tom. And then my people and I will start in on the rest of you. Tom, sit down. It is going to be you or us. That's the way you've wanted it, and that's the way it's going to be. And I'm going to warn you right now, if it isn't us, then you people are going to go through hell before it's you. Now, you go right ahead and hang me, because it won't Tom, change a Tom. thing. Just get me out of here. And you know perfectly well that I had the basis of a mistrial before you were stampeded into making that little speech of yours. A mistrial. Now, what good would it have done? That's you made fools out of Ben Watson and Lil Bailey, and the jury just sat there. They didn't pat an eye, not a flicker, just 12 little hangmen all in a row. Now, you think any other jury would be different? Here's your supper. I don't want it. Suit yourself. Fred. I'll see you in court in the morning. Jared, why don't you just give up? I'm not sure. But I think it's because that's what you want me to do. That's a pretty good way to get your leg broken. You still going to defend that Modoc? That's right. After what he said in court, Get that leg down. It's gonna take a lot of fancy tricks to get that engine off. You do, and you're gonna have to find another town to live in. Glass of sherry, Jared? No, thank you. I think you'd better have one. Then I can justify this as a social call. Otherwise, I think it would be improper for us to discuss a change of venue outside the courtroom. That is why you're here, isn't it? Yes, it is. Wasn't hard to guess. If our positions were reversed, I'd probably be doing the same thing. Tell me honestly, Jared, do you think Tom Lightfoot could get a fair trial in any other county in this state? All I know is he isn't getting one here. But does he really want one? I thought he did until his outburst in court today. Well, Andrew, I... I can't really say what's going on inside of him. I suppose one would have to be an Indian to really know. But whether or not he wants a fair trial isn't the question. That's irrelevant. It's our job to see that he gets one. You do realize, don't you, that what he said in court today will be publicized everywhere? Tom Lightfoot is a minor celebrity. I assure you, Jared, there is no way you can take this case where the emotional climate will be any different. I think that remains to be seen. Well, Jared, you want to see justice done, and so do I, but it will have to be dispensed right here in Stockton. Are you turning my request down? You give me no real legal grounds to accommodate you. As you say, this is no court. Tomorrow morning, when court does convene, I'm going to make my request again. I want the record to show that you turned my plea down. Jared. Good night. Hello, 
Murphy. Hi, Jared. I hear you had quite a day. You want a double? You bet I do. But I'll take a light one instead. I've still got a lot of work to do. Sorry, Jared. Looks like I might have to get used to that, Murphy. Why treat, Jared? Well, thank you, Arthur. I wish you'd be this generous in court. I'd like to, but it wouldn't be fair to the taxpayers. <laughs> wouldn't be doing you any favor, either. Well, I don't know about that. I do. The best thing that could happen is for you to lose this case. Oh, I meant that. The best thing that could happen is for you to walk off this case right now. I'm afraid that's not possible, Arthur. Jared, I hate to lose a case. Defeat keeps me awake nights, turns my food and liquor into ashes, but I don't think I'll get much pleasure out of winning this one at the price of the destruction of a fine young lawyer like you. Now, don't you worry about me. I'll survive. Will you? What'll happen to you if Tom Lightfoot's acquitted? Jared, what'll happen if he carries out his threat? Well, I sure wouldn't expect to win any popularity contests. Jared. Arthur. I ran across something I'd almost forgotten about. You remember the Boston Massacre? Lawyer who defended the English? He saw all the judges quit. Saw his family threatened by the mob that took over the city. But he didn't back off. Remember who he was? Mm-hmm. John Adams. Of course, I don't expect to become president, but I do expect to get your congratulations. I think I'll let you buy me a drink now. Jared? What happened, Nick? I thought you were on your way home with Mother Nordrid. It was a general idea. We got as far as Cutter's Bridge. Well, did the buggy break down? No, the goodwill of our neighbors broke down. They were on the bridge waiting for us, waiting to stone us. And they did and spooked the horses. They what? They stoned us. Was anybody hurt? No, it was pure luck. You know something, Jared? I think this is just the beginning. Where are Mother and Audrey now? For now, where's your office? Jared, take some deputies with you. See that you get home.
I think he headed straight for the reservation. Anyway, that's where I'm taking the posse first thing. Now, I thought you two might want to ride along with us. Well, he'd be crazy to do that. He'd know that'd be the first place we'd look, Fred. Maybe. The Modoc are his people. Who else would give him protection? Now, I need men. All the men I can get. Men who know him, know his habits. Now, how about it? You gonna ride with us? I'm sorry, Fred. Nick? Yeah. Well, remember, Jared, you told him not to make us choose sides. He wouldn't listen. Come on, Fred. Fred, let's go. They'll shoot him on sight, won't they? Not necessarily. After what he said in court today, they'll never take him alive. There's still a couple of things I can try. I'm gonna go into town. Jared, do you think Tom will be there? No, I agree with Nick. It doesn't matter whether he's in Stockton or not. I want to talk to Ben Watson and Bill Bailey. Be back as soon as I can. Well, looks like it's going to be a long night. I'll make some coffee. Ben said he wasn't going to stay around this town no more. Not with that crazy Modoc on the loose and gunning for him. So he took the 910 to Sacramento. Thanks, Murphy. I was just coming to see you, Lil. Well, I gotta find Ben. Oh. You're a little late. You in the motor. Oh, no, no. Ben's left town. Left town? That's right. Took the 910 to Sacramento. You're lying. Why don't you go ask Murphy? Oh, Ben wouldn't do that. He wouldn't leave me here to face... <laughs> face who, Lil? Tom Lightfoot? Now, you don't have any reason to be afraid of him, do you? It was Ben and Clem he threatened to kill. Of course, that was before, wasn't it? Before you lied about him in court. I didn't lie. I told exactly what happened. Oh, yes, you lied. Tom didn't kill Clem, and you know it. Listen, leave me alone. All right, Lil. I'll leave you alone. Of course, you'll probably be dead by morning. I don't see why I should have any sympathy for you. Tom Lightfoot is after you. He could be anywhere, couldn't he? Now, you think about that. Maybe he's watching us right now, or maybe he's over in your room waiting for you. I'll get the sheriff. I'll get protection. The best protection you've got is the truth. Can't you see that? You're safe only if he's safe. I can't help you. Tell me what happened in that barn, Lil. You made one mistake, now don't make another. Tell me. Ben killed Clem. He didn't mean to. He was drunk. Ben and Clem got in a fight. What about? What about? What? Me. But it was Ben's, Ben's idea to say it was the Modoc. I didn't want to. Honest. I told him. I said, Ben, even if he is only a, a stinking Indian. All right, it's... you're coming with me. You're going to spend the night at the ranch. Close. Oh no, Lil, there isn't time for that. I got to get to that posse before they get to Tom. <laughs> What's the matter, Nick? I don't know. I've been thinking. I don't believe he'd head for the Modoc Reservation. Well, we got to start somewhere. Well, I think I know a better start. Of course, it'll make us take a 20-minute detour. Well, all right. Lead on. All right, let's go. Father's clothes. I saved them. I guess I always knew it'd come to this. Your hand, let me see it. It's all right. Let me see it. Jared, senior? 
Nobody sent me. I thought you'd be here, so I came. Ask me to give myself up? Yes, before it's too late. Too late for what? To become a white man? To stay alive. I'm alive now for the first time. You're a wanted man. Sooner or later, they'll catch you. Maybe. But they're not going to kill me at the end of a rope. Order the white man against me is going to have to work for it. What about the white men that want you to live? Men like Jared. He worked so hard for you, and the trial wasn't even over yet. It was over before it started. He would have appealed. Oh, then maybe I can spend the rest of my life in prison instead of being killed on the gallows. Well, no thank you, Audra. And I'm through begging the white man for anything. Now go on home, Audra. Where will you go? Look, I can't tell you that. Though you'll be hearing about me. Although I doubt if it's anything you want to put in your scrapbook. Tom! Tom Lightfoot! This is Sheriff Madden! If you're in there, come out with your hands up! She said you keep low! Tom! This is Nick Barkley! Now we got you surrounded, you haven't got a chance! Now give yourself up! Nick, he's asking for it. Whispering woke him up. Tom, I've got something for you. Is it about the Modoc bill? The Senate passed it and sent it on to the governor for his signature. Oh, that's wonderful. Why don't you read the rest of it to her? Please advise if your friend Thomas Lightfoot would be interested in accepting position as legal counsel on Indian Affairs Board, established under terms of Modoc reparations law. I'm making this require at the request of governor who will make appointment immediately upon receiving a permittive reply. Andrew Young, President Pro Tem, California State Senate. Well, Tom, what do you want me to tell the senator? Oh, Tom, please say yes. Please. It's only a step, Tom, a small step. If this law is going to work, it has to be administered by men who want it to work. Men who want to go on from here to better laws for your people. What promises do I have to make if I accept this position? The only ones you have to make are the ones you want to make to yourself and your people. All right. I'll try it. I'll get a telegram off to the senator right away. Here, Barclays, you never give up, do you? 